Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Rhea, your study buddy for hematology. And today we are going to have a review for megaloblastic anemia. So if you want a more in-depth video where I go really in-depth with terms and all the concepts that you need to learn about megaloblastic anemia, please check my other videos. But today, this is going to be like a cramming session, again, like what I did for hypochromic anemia. So this is like a shortened version. So if you have a comprehensive exam, this video will be good for you. So anyway, let's start. So first things first, what happens in megaloblastic anemia? So the root cause of megaloblastic anemia is there is a defective DNA synthesis. And this is because you have either vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency. So what are the lab findings? How does the peripheral blood look like? So the main findings are there is a decrease in haptoglobin, increase in bilirubin and serum lactase dehydrogenase. There is an increase in serum iron and for the peripheral blood picture, there is an increase in the MCV. So you have macro ovalocytes, they're greater than 100 femtoliters. So they're bigger than the normal RBCs. And there is a decrease in RBC release into the peripheral blood because they die prematurely in the bone marrow and so they don't make it to the peripheral blood. And so you have a decrease in reticulocytes and there is an increase in RDW, anisocytosis, there is presence of Howell Jolly bodies, basophilic stippling, cabot rings, megaloblastic NRBCs, um, it's pancytopenic, so your WBC, RBC count are both low and the presence of hypersegmented neutrophils. So that's a very big keyword there, hypersegmented neutrophils. You see it in megaloblastic anemia. So another word for vitamin B12 is cobalamin. And we're gonna cover now the vitamin B12 deficiency and what you need to know for an exam with vitamin B12 deficiency. So vitamin B12 deficiency, let's cover really quickly what the causes are for this deficiency. There's dietary, where um, children that are born from vegan mothers develop this deficiency, and there's malabsorption, of course, pernicious anemia, where you don't have intrinsic factor. And so if you don't have intrinsic factor, you're not able to absorb vitamin B12 in your digestive system. And then the other causes are gastrectomy, where you remove parietal cells which produce intrinsic factor. And there's blind loop syndrome, where there's bacteria overgrowth and it competes with your vitamin B12. So you're not able to absorb it because there's competition with the bacteria. And so there's also fish tapeworm, the, the filibotrium latum, which also competes for vitamin B12 by splitting the vitamin B12 from the IF. And so when that gets split, you're not able to absorb your vitamin B12. And it's common in Scandinavian countries. And then lastly, there's the disease of ileum. But let's focus now on pernicious anemia because pernicious anemia is usually um, get asked on the exam. So in pernicious anemia, you have a deficiency in the intrinsic factor. And so if you don't have intrinsic factor, you're not able to absorb vitamin B12. And so it's common in Scandinavian countries with um, English and Irish descent. And there's also the congenital pernicious anemia, which is the total absence of the intrinsic factor. So pernicious anemia is characterized by the lack of hydrochloric acid or achlorhydria and the atrophy of gastric parietal cells or the wasting away of the parietal cells. And the parietal cells are the ones in charge of producing the intrinsic factor. So that's what's happening. And so that's that. Um, let's talk about the lab test for pernicious anemia, which is the Schilling test. So that's also really important. So when an exam asks what is the test for malabsorption of vitamin B12, the answer is the Schilling test, okay? And I think you do need to understand what goes on in the Schilling test. So 
part one is when the person's given an intramuscular dose of unlabeled vitamin B12 and there is a radioactively labeled vitamin B12 taken orally at the same time and so since your intramuscular injection saturates all of your cobalamin receptors the ideal result for part one is that the radioactively labeled vitamin b12 would show up in your urine since everything is saturated so your kidney should be able to filter that out and it should show up on your urine if it if it was effectively absorbed into your body if it's not, if it didn't show up in your urine, you proceed to part two, which is the oral dose of radioactive vitamin B12 plus the intrinsic factor to correct for malabsorption and the injection at the same time of the unlabeled B12. So now that we added intrinsic factor, if the defect or abnormality in your body is that you don't produce intrinsic factor, then in part two, when you're given intrinsic factor, this should correct the abnormality and you should be able to absorb vitamin B12. And if it corrects and it shows up in your urine, then that means you have pernicious anemia because it's your intrinsic factor that's lacking. That's why you couldn't absorb the vitamin B12. But there's also other reasons for malabsorption. So if it's not corrected, then further tests should be done to identify the cause of your malabsorption. The clinical symptoms for megaloblastic anemia or vitamin B12 deficiency is jaundice, weakness, sore tongue, which is called glossitis, glossitis, and gastrointestinal disorders, numbness, and other CNS problems, so central nervous system problems. So as I've talked about in my earlier video about vitamin B12, this actually involves neurological manifestations such as early paresthesia, areflexia, pins and needle sensations in the toes and later in the limbs, and later stage you get clumsiness in coordinate gait, severe weakness and stiffness, of limbs impaired memory and depression so vitamin b12 deficiency actually affects your brain and your nervous system so it's important to note that in vitamin b12 deficiency this develops longer because you only require a small amount for your daily uptake and demand and your body readily stores excess vitamin b12 into your liver so this actually takes time about three to six years so now let's talk about folic acid deficiency. So for folic acid deficiency, the cause is mainly dietary. You didn't get enough folic acid into your diet. And so you do need to eat your greens. You need to eat salads or whatever. <laughs> Any alternative to get your greens into your body, please do because folic acid is actually really important for your body. And so, yeah, so this is one of the main causes of megaloblastic anemia. And the clinical manifestations are similar to vitamin B12 deficiency, but the thing is, it just doesn't have the CNS involvement. It doesn't mess with your brain or your nervous system. So that's that, but it's the same. You get jaundice and weakness and you get the megaloblastic picture in your peripheral blood. So again, the causes of folic acid deficiency is poor diet and pregnancy because pregnancy demands a lot of, you know, cell division, DNA replication, and so it does need folic acid to assist on that demand. And there's also chemotherapeutic anti-folic acid drugs such as methotrexate. So these drugs block folic acid and so you're not able to absorb them into your body and that causes folic acid deficiency so again causes of folic acid deficiency is poor diet pregnancy chemotherapeutic antifolic acid drugs so now we're on the last part of this cramming session which is the non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemias so for non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemias the rbcs are macrocytes but they're not oval in shape they're just round and big and their mcvs are greater than 100 but they're not greater than 110 
the main cause for non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemias alcoholism and liver disease so please take it easy on the alcohol <laughs> so yeah so that's that and that's it for megaloblastic anemia cramming session it's very very short and it's very concise it's just the very bare things that you really need to know if you have an exam tomorrow or a comprehensive exam in a week or whatever you just want to refresh your memory this video is it it's very fast and convenient so Hopefully I've helped you today and if you enjoy my content, please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!